For years on Tomorrow's World, we've been heralding the arrival of the non-polluting electric car. Well, here, they've actually made it a certainty by act of law. And we're not talking about just the odd token vehicle here. The law states that by 1998, 2% of all cars for sale have to be zero emission vehicles. And that figure rises to 10% in 10 years' time. That legislation has made Los Angeles the place to come if you're into electric vehicles. Here, promotional hype and technology go hand in hand. For example, the local electricity supplier has installed a roof full of solar panels, forming a sort of solar carport. Even in sunny California, it can only charge a couple of cars a day. But people are starting to plug into the message. We get about 30 calls a day asking, where can I get an electric vehicle? What's happening? When will they be on the market? The media does lots of stories. The auto companies uh, put out information. What about the running costs? Will they be comparable to ordinary cars? The electricity will be a lot cheaper than gasoline would be. Uh, maybe if you average paid $20 a week for gasoline today, it'll be $20 a month for electricity and the maintenance will be a lot less because an electric vehicle is so much simpler to operate. But the real question is how often will you have to replace batteries and how much will they cost? Out here on the west coast, it's not just running the vehicles that concerns them. The Californians are also determined to profit by the move to electricity. They mean to pioneer the manufacture of the vehicles in an effort to restore some of the skilled jobs lost to the shrinking aerospace industry. Take this place, for example. It used to hum to the sound of machines making parts for airplanes. Today, it's been taken over by a consortium to find the best answers to technical questions. For example, where do you put those batteries? Answer, under the dash. Tires with low rolling resistance, could they save energy? And to improve the car's 60-mile range, could it feed current back into the battery as it slows down? Recharging has to be convenient and done easily at home, say, overnight. And quick recharging has to be possible at the recharge stations. And another way to deliver the electricity to the car is to use one of these, a new loop charger. No electrical connections here, just magnetic induction. So it's perfectly safe to use, even in the rain. And here's another little challenge. The heater in an ordinary car gets its heat from a warm engine. But with no warm engine, where do you get the heat? An electric fire or fan would drain the battery in minutes, not to mention the air conditioning. So here's an alternative. It uses something called the Peltier effect. The junction between two different metals in here freezes when you pass a current through it in one direction. There, it's frozen solid in a few seconds. And then heats up rapidly when the current is passed through it in the other direction. And now you can see it's starting to boil away. With a number of those junctions embedded into the car seat, you can have highly efficient heating, or more applicable to this climate, cooling.